Hollywood, 1989. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young Disney world at the height of its golden age, the Disney MGM Studios was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Then, something happened that changed all that. The time is now to celebrate 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios with the largest ever in-person gathering of those who created its magic. The Imagineers who brought you the great movie ride. Muppet Vision 3D. And of course, as you may recognize, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. We'll present never before seen stories and artwork from the Hollywood that never was but always will be. This event is somewhat unique in that it will offer a meet and greet and autograph session, as well as two days of star-studded panels and presentations. We invite you, if you dare, to register at stage89.com to attend this event either in person or via streaming, or just to get more information. And all event proceeds travel directly to Give Kids the World Village. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks around the world. But here now the news for March 25th, 2024. The years-long reimagining of Epcot will finally be completed this summer when Communicore Hall and Plaza officially open. The final Epcot construction walls will come down and guests will be able to visit both the hall and the plaza beginning on June 10th. Communicore Hall will be home to the Epcot festivals and other celebrations. A new permanent Mickey and Friends meet and greet location will be inside as well. Of course, Mickey and uh, Minnie currently are still meeting at the Imagination Pavilion in their Disney 100 outfits. Disney previously indicated that Communicore Hall would have a demo kitchen, gallery space, and a mixology bar. More luscious greenery and relaxing spaces will open in Communicore Plaza and Inspiration Gardens uh, when the plaza opens on June 10th. And also, a new Encanto show will debut with it. Celebration Encanto uh, will run several times throughout the day from June 10th through September 6th. The show will invite guests to sing along with their favorite Encanto songs with characters like Mirabelle and Bruno. That's all the information we have so far on this. But... Um, I think we were all wrong. I thought for sure the building and everything would open with a festival. There's no festival starting, but it is in time, at least for this Encanto summer offering to debut. A new National Geographic special titled Epcot Becoming, which chronicles the park's transformation, has been announced. Premiering on National Geographic on April 29th at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, the show's description is as follows. Epcot Becoming showcases the reimagining of Epcot for a new generation. Watch as Walt Disney World Resort teams rise to the challenge of bringing the constantly evolving park into the future, from creating an innovative new coaster to exploring the wonder of water and culminating with the debut of the new nighttime show, Luminous, the Symphony of Us. Um, I'm interested to see how much gets left out of this special, like all the things that changed or were canceled. Uh, that's what I would like to see. And I, I would love for them to talk about what the earliest plans were. That piece of concept art we got shown, I think it was the 2017 D23 Expo, where it just looks so incredibly different from what we ended up getting. Obviously, concept art, is it's a concept, but um, I'm dying to know what, what could have been. After four years, Walt Disney World cast members are finally getting their pin trading lanyards back next month. Pin trading was suspended in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, Disney introduced new pin trading boards and mystery boxes. And in early 2023, we spotted a cast member with a pin trading lanyard. But for the most part, cast members have not carried pin lanyards since March of 2020. Again, this will all change in April. 
Disney Park shared on TikTok that cast to guest pin trading will resume on April 7th of 2024. Cast members in the video showed off their pin trading lanyards. Cast members will wear traditional lanyards and cross body lanyards displaying pins they have for trade with guests. Guests are usually allowed to trade two pins with a cast member or at a board. Um, there are some nuances to that, like you can't trade two of the same pins. You can't trade a pin onto a lanyard that's already on the lanyard, et cetera. Um, but this is so nice to see. I was worried this had gone away. And for me um, and, and for many in this company, the roots of WWNT are, are embedded in Disney pin trading, uh, a story I'll save for another day. But um, so it's very important to us here at WWNT. It's, I think it's a great hobby. And I hope, I am praying that the pins on the lanyards will be better than they were previously. Um, they, in the TikTok, they allude to limited edition stuff and other things. And I'm like sitting there going, guys, I can't tell you the last time you put a limited edition pin on a lanyard for trade. And I'm talking about even way before the lanyards went away. Um, you know, the, the, I remember in the earliest days of pin trading, you could find all sorts of great stuff on lanyards. Then the hidden Mickey pins, or we called them back when I was a lad, uh, they, were cast, uh, they were the cast lanyard pins, uh, the pins that could only be found through cast member trading on the lanyards. Um, before those, you could find all sorts of different stuff. And then once those became ubiquitous, those became like the only thing you could find on cast lanyards, um, if, if not, you know, some scrapper pins or fake pins at that point. But um, I'm hoping things will be different now. They probably won't be, but I miss the days of taking pins to the park and being able to find cool, interesting things. Even if not, I don't need them to be limited edition of 100, just cool, interesting, weird, different things, like weird open edition, older stuff. You know, it's nice to see a variety and I think it keeps the hobby alive. An old Carousel of Progress reference has begun to appear on Walt Disney World buses. The reference appears on these screens on the front of the bus. These screens display the destination like Magic Kingdom, but then also uh, we'll switch in between that and a quote or phrase of some kind. We've now started spotting now is the best time of our lives on these bus screens. The quote may not be familiar to younger Disney fans, but it's taken from the best time of your life. The Sherman Brothers wrote the song for the debut of the Carousel of Progress when it made it to the Magic Kingdom in 1975. The new theme song was commissioned by the sponsor General Electric, who reportedly wanted guests to focus on the now instead of the future. It replaced There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow, also by the Sherman Brothers, but the original song was restored to the attraction in the 1990s when they updated it for New Tomorrowland. As of July 2022, the best time of your life is also referenced in the narration of the Tomorrowland Transit Authority people mover at the Magic Kingdom. A, cu a cute reference. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. And the best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. Many real plants have been planted around Tiana's Bayou Adventure at the Magic Kingdom during ongoing construction. Most of the foliage and trees installed around the attraction so far have been fake, but new ferns and trees in front of the mountain appear to be real. There's also more flowers, but these are of the fake variety. The new plants fill out the space around the flume. Some scaffolding has been removed from the left side of the mountain, but some poles still run along a ridge. We've seen crews fixing up the plants and rock work in this area, but no crew members were there when we visited. The entrance to the Briar Patch gift shop is now covered in dark scrim. Previously, the doors were just closed and roped off. Disney recently announced that the Briar Patch at Disneyland would become Ray's Berets, with a portion of Pooh Corner becoming Lewis's Critter Club. These gift shop names could be used at Walt Disney World as well. We'll have to wait and see, of course. There are two stores at this attraction in Disney World. There is the Briar Patch here outside, and as well, there is the shop at the exit of Splash Mountain. So uh, having two shop names makes a lot of sense. That being said, though, to be clear, um, they, this, the Briar Patch store at Disneyland is mostly a hat shop. Neither um, Briar Patch nor the exit shop were primarily hat shops, so I would be interested to see if Ray's Berets lives on in one of those locations, we'll, we'll wait and see. Real plants have also been installed at the front of Tiana's Bayou Adventures queue. 
Uh, three new trees peek out from above the construction walls around the Frontierland train station. From the train station, we can look down into the queue, and the three trees are surrounded by small ferns and shrubs. Many of these have not yet been planted, but are still in their black pots staged for installation. There's a ring of bright green shrubs uh, next to a sidewalk lined in brick and wrought iron railings as well. The windows on the front of the queue's barn are now open for the first time in months. It has previously been covered with scrim. Scaffolding is in front of the windows and doorway below it. The window is split into four sections, each with nine, each with nine small window panes. And we could also see lights on, on, on the inside of the barn, which was painted yellow early on in the construction. The barn also has those murals on the two sides, framing the entrance. Beyond construction walls, more wrought, uh, wrought iron railings have been installed around the pathways, uh, but some of the old wood splash mountain railings remain as well. Flower beds are full of dirt and no new foliage just yet. The open area has cobblestones that will presumably continue throughout the queue uh, as work moves on. Sticking with Tiana's Bayou Adventure, crews installed new signs uh, overnight a couple days ago. The signs tell guests that the ride is testing and not yet open. There are three signs, all with the same design, around uh, the loop of the flume at the bottom of the drop. The signs feature Louis the Alligator, who will be a major character in the attraction. The design also features the uh, matches the Mardi Gras posters on the construction walls. It reads, sorry friends, we are ride testing only opening this summer. What's really cool about this, this is actually a reference to the testing signs that were there when Splash Mountain was testing back in 1992. Um, around the same time too, Splash opened in the summer. And so this is, uh, this is a nice homage. I am, I am overjoyed um, that, that Imagineers were like, you know, Due to sensitivity, we can't really reference the characters. We can't reference Song of the South. How can we pay homage to Splash Mountain without, uh, you know, uh, bringing up the subject matter, right? And so these signs are a great part of that. Um, I've heard there are, there's a scene or two for sure in the attraction that pay homage to scenes in Splash Mountain. Um, so it's, there will be some loving references. Splash Mountain will not fade away forever. Uh, in, in most cases, so it's nice to hear. Of course, also, they began testing with human beings on the ride, namely Disney Imagineers. So Disney Imagineers have already rode Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We're getting close, folks. We're getting real close. Opens this summer, no date yet, but we expect um, during the next Disney shareholder meeting, uh, there will be an announcement of a date made. Mr. and Mrs. Easter Bunny have returned to the Magic Kingdom for the 2024 season to meet and greet guests in advance of the holiday. Guests can meet them at Bunny Lane Garden, the Enchanted Glade Gazebo in Liberty Square. The couple are expected to meet each day intermittently from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. through Sunday, March 31st. Guests can pick up a complimentary autograph card there. The front reads, Happy Easter, with the Magic Kingdom logo below it. On the other side, Mr. and Mrs. Bunny's autographs are featured. The schedules are changing for the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade and the Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade at the Magic Kingdom. Starting on April 7th, the Magic Kingdom is dropping down its Festival of Fantasy Parade showtimes from two shows a day to just one. The parade will be at 3 p.m., going back to that traditional time. This change is fairly normal and follows expected park attendance. Because of the schedule change, the Disney, the Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade will also shift from... Uh, Shift its performance times going from 5, 10 p.m. and 6, 25 p.m. showings to 10, 30 a.m. and 11, 45 a.m. instead. These changes will be in effect at least through May 4th. Joy from Inside Out will be appearing in Pixar Plaza at Disney's Hollywood Studios in honor of the release of Inside Out 2 this summer. Guests will be able to meet Joy beginning on June 10th. Inside Out 2 will hit theaters on June 14th. Disney also teased new Pixar merchandise that will be available at Beverly Sunset Boutique. Pixar Plaza used to be known as Pixar Place. It's located near the entrance to Toy Story Land, past Walt Disney Presents. It previously was the entrance to Toy Story Mania many years ago. Here, guests can meet characters from The Incredibles, including Edna Mode uh, at the Edna Mode Experience, and Sully from Monsters, Inc. also makes appearances, uh, and there are Pixar-themed backdrops. Disney's Animal Kingdom will celebrate the 30th anniversary of The Lion King with a celebration this summer. The celebration will run from June 10th through September 6th. A new merchandise collection inspired by The Lion King will include apparel and accessories. In fact, a new item arrived over the weekend that would be the Zazu Shoulder Plush. The Pumbaa Popcorn Bucket released last summer will return as well, and there will be limited time special menu items. Timon and Rafiki will meet guests at Rafiki's Planet Watch again. Meet and greet times will be available in the My Disney Experience app. 
Guests can learn to draw the Lion King characters at the animation experience at Rafiki's Planet Watch as well. The new seating area by Harambe Market in Animal Kingdom is finally open. After nine months of construction, the new seating area is open in the Africa section of the park. It is across from the quick service location and directly to the left of the Melamwengu Guest House building. I'm sure you, I didn't know what that was. That's apparently the building right there. It can be easily spotted thanks to its thatched roof though. The seating area provides a covered place for guests to eat and has been themed to match the rest of the area with uh, posted advertisements that look like they've been there for ages. The fencing around the seating area has been carved with small details. The aged look of the materials blends nicely with the rest of Harambe Village. Entering the covered area, you'll see that it adds a lot of seating options for guests who have, may have picked up a bite to eat at Harambe Market, Tamu Tamu Refreshments, or Zuri's Sweet Shop. String lights and lanterns hang from the ceiling to add to the ambiance, and there are also a few ceiling fans. The trash is labeled with a fun sign that warns guests not to feed the baboons. This entryway leads to the pre-existing seating area for Tamu Tamu. A sign above the entry reads Karabuni, which translates to welcome in Swahili. And on the opposite side of the doorway, the sign says Kwaharini, which of course you know means to go well in Swahili or farewell. Disney announced that a new drone show, Disney Dreams That Soar, will run nightly at Disney Springs this summer. Disney Dreams That Soar will be performed above Lake Buena Vista on the west side of the Disney Springs from May 24th through September 2nd. You Can Fly takes on a whole new meaning as Disney showcases stories celebrating the joy of flight with state-of-the-art drones choreographed to create designs in the sky and paired with a soaring musical score. And as well, memorable movie quotes. Disney Live Entertainment Parades and Spectacular's executive Steve Davison stated that last fall, well, he stated last fall that drones are the next thing, teasing more drone shows would be coming. Finally, we have one. Of course, this is not the first drone show in the history of Disney Springs. In 2016, they featured the limited time Starbright Holidays drone show with pre-programmed flight paths and light designs for the holidays. This is so great to see. Um, I famously said, I think, after seeing the drone shows at Disneyland Paris, um, that Walt Disney World could not afford to be late to this game and could not afford to debut a show after Universal Orlando. I am, I am so glad to see um, that management felt the same and the rush was on to make sure that the first uh, major drone show in the Orlando theme park area was going to be from Disney and not from Universal. Um, I think that shows a, a great initiative. Um, I'm excited to see how this turns out. I think it's wonderful. Um, will they eventually go to a park? What will the permanent role of drones be in nighttime entertainment uh, at Walt Disney World? We will have to wait and see, but I'm, I'm anxious to see exactly what this show is. Um, I think it could be great. Guests can now take a virtual tour of the new DVC cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. Uh, speaking of things I don't think will be great. <laughs> Thanks to a video from Matterport Discover, guests can take a look inside one of the cabins at Fort Wilderness even if they're thousands of miles away. In the interactive video, guests can click through and walk around the cabin, getting a good view of all the different spaces. Here you can see the kitchen, uh, dining and living room space, and Matterport notes that the cabin shown is a model and that the fixtures and furnishings are subject to change. The blue icons found throughout the cabins are clickable and offer further information about the different features and amenities. A noted here, the couch converts to a queen size bed. This new virtual tour is the most detailed view we've gotten of these brand new cabins since the layout was revealed early in 2024. You can click through the virtual tour on the Matterport website, which is linked in our post at WDWNT.com. Something I'm not looking forward to. I know everyone said, oh, now I'm on the media list, I'm only gonna be positive. I don't like these cabins. I don't think I'm going to like these cabins in person. We'll see, but I'm, I'm still not a fan of this or those, the Polynesian building and everything that's going on outside of there, man. I just drove through there the other day and it's, it's a war zone out there and I'm not sure I'm going to like it after it's a war zone either. Did you know there's a way you can save big at Disney Deluxe Resorts? Today's show is brought to you by DVC Rental Store, a great way for you to plan a luxury Disney vacation on a modest budget. You don't need to sign up for a full DVC contract, but instead they will allow you to rent the points you need for a magical stay. It's really the best way to stay deluxe at a fraction of the cost. And now, thanks to their lowest price guarantee offer, you can always have the best price on the market. The rooms are discounted anywhere up to 75% off, and they have the largest member inventory for points, so there is a lot to choose from. You can search their avail availability for free right now, which is not something all rental companies offer. And if you do choose to book, they have a great cancellation policy and a low down payment. 
DVC Rental Store is the number one DVC rental company in the United States, and one we've personally used many times. If you've watched a, a villa tour of any kind on this channel, it probably was rented through them, and uh, that was before they were even a sponsor. But head to the description to check them out. Um, a great way uh, to stay in one of these accommodations. StarWars.com shared a first look at some of the new merchandise coming to the Disney Store and Disney Parks this spring for May the 4th, including Darth Maul-inspired merchandise honoring the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace. This limited edition double hilt lightsaber features sound effects and illuminates blades sold separately in red. It's presented in a wooden box with lighting effects. The box also plays a segment of the Duel of the Fates. It's a limited edition of 7,000 pieces. It'll be available again at DisneyStore.com and at Walt Disney World Resort and Disneyland Resort on May 4th. This year's Star Wars Day collection will include retro-inspired apparel, a baseball cap, and a stainless steel water bottle. Available for purchase on DisneyStore.com on April 4th and at Walt Disney World and Disneyland on May the 4th. A Darth Maul-focused collection will feature tees, hoodies, lightsaber collectibles, and limited edition items. Available for purchase again on May the 4th at all those locations. You can enjoy tees, home decor, and more featuring the whimsical art of Will Gay. Available for purchase at Walt Disney World Resort and Disneyland Resort on April 3rd and on DisneyStore.com on April 8th. Meanwhile, the new Salvage Stormtrooper Helmet Bucket will be available at Disneyland Park and Hollywood Studios in honor of May the 4th. StarWars.com announced that the Helmet Bucket will be available to purchase at select Disneyland Resort locations on May 4th while supplies last. Served with popcorn, french fries, or Galma garlic puffs, depending on location. It will also be available for purchase at select locations throughout Hollywood Studios in May, but no exact date was given. The Star Tours The Adventures Continue merchandise collection, which was announced as part of the Season of the Force at Disneyland, will also be coming to Walt Disney World. The items are due to arrive at Disneyland Resort on April 5th, but they'll also likely arrive at Disney World around the same time. Disney shared two items from the collection, with the first being the, uh, the zip-up hoodie with a Star Tours logo on the left side and the chest, inspired by the costume that the cast members wear. I, I need this desperately. The hoodie is similar to the collection released at Disneyland back in 2022 in, in celebration of the 35th anniversary of the attraction. The second item is a black graphic tee with the Star Speeder 1000 vehicle printed on the front. An image of Darth Vader's face can be seen looming in the distance. Also spotted are the TIE Fighters and the Death Star, and the bottom reads Star Tours The Adventures Continue. More merchandise is to be revealed as the date draws closer. Select items will also be available from Disney Store. I love Di Star Tours get love this year. Makes me happy. Disney has released new information about the Season of the Force at Disneyland, in addition to that merchandise. Beginning April 5th and running through June 2nd, Season of the Force will take over Disneyland Park. On select nights at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, guests can experience the nighttime show Fire of the Rising Moons. Featuring music from John Williams, who composed the Star Wars scores, the ceremony will light up the night sky in celebration of the Heroes of the Galaxy. The show can be experienced from various locations around Batu, including Black Spire Spaceport, the Thai Echelon docking platform, and the Speeder Garage. As previously announced, this event will see the debut of characters from The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and Andor as part of Star Tours The Adventures Continue. Fan favorite overlay to Space Mountain, Hyperspace Mountain will return for the event as well. And guests can find new merchandise themed to the event at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the Star Traders in Tomorrowland, and Star Wars Trading Post at Downtown Disney. And it wouldn't be a Disneyland event without specialty food items, and the Season of the Force will have a number of food and beverage items, including this sugar cookie. New to Season of the Force will be Disney Photo Pass Magic Shot options that gives guests the opportunity to search for Din Djarin, Grogu, and others using a hollow puck. This is in addition to the other Star Wars Magic Shots and Photo Pass lenses. The Donald's Duck Pond Splash Pad next to Donald's Boat in Mickey's Toontown at Disneyland has finally opened to guests as of Friday, March 22nd, one year after the rest of Toontown reopened for it, from its reimagining. The Splash Pad area was only briefly open during the media previews in early 2023. The Splash Pad then closed due to water issues. Uh, only the dry side of Donald's Duck Pond ended up being open since then. Splash pad is on the right side of Donald's boat. The left side is that dry play area, and a rope fence down the middle separates the two. The backstory of Donald's duck pond is that Donald has crashed his boat into the duck pond next to Goofy's house. Uh, the boat was formerly in a pool of water with a waterfall, but this feature was uh, filled in to become the play area in the new Toontown. Originally, guests were able to enter Donald's boat as well, but it closed many years ago and was permanently sealed off uh, during the reimagining. 
There are 20 computer-controlled sunken fountains in the splash pad. They shoot streams of water in arcs across the blue ground. There's also a misting effect and lights, which we'll see when we return at night. The fountain loops through a seven-minute sequence of water dancing. It also looks like Donald has had some leaking issues and bolted white panels to the hole of his boat. Water squirts out of uh, some of the holes where the bolts have gone missing. While the leaking boat is a purposeful part of the splash pad design, it looks like there are, as, there are some accidental drainage issues in the area. Water from the splash pad is seeping through the space uh, between the rope fence into the dry side of the play area as well. Uh, as well, it also looks like they're not completely done. Towards the back of the boat is a flower bed full of mulch, but no flowers yet. And other flower beds and planters in the area are filled with ferns, but nothing has been planted here yet. Uh, it's along the walkway to the splash pads shower. Um, I don't know why this took a year. I can't imagine. But then for it to open after a year and then be leaking into the dry area, what a nightmare. What a nightmare of a project this tiny children's splash pad has been. It does make you admire the Moana water play area, though, right? I mean, that, that open and, yeah, an effect here or there is off for a day, you know, at times. But... Um, not really having any of these issues, and it's taken them an extra year to figure out this splash pad, and still issues persist. Disney Cruise Line announced on Wednesday the name of their newest ship, the Disney Destiny. The Destiny, which will be the last in the Wish class, uh, which includes the Wish and the Treasure, is set to be delivered in 2025. It will have a heroes and villains theme, drawing from films like The Lion King, Hercules, and 101 Dalmatians for its venues. Disney stated the ship's theme was inspired by the common thread found in Disney stories, where opposing forces of light and dark cause a hero to rise to their full potential. They showed off a new commemorative coin featuring hero Minnie and also filigree artwork featuring her on the bow of the ship. Along with the announcement came the animated short titled Heroes and Villains on the High Seas, in which Minnie tries to find uh, the Destiny's missing commemorative coin. She encounters Scar, Cruella de Vil, Hercules, Pegasus, Hades, Pain, and Panic, all of whom will presumably play some role on board. Of note, the short ends with a quick scene in a ship hallway. The hallway has different doors with Easter eggs that hint at what's to come on the Disney Destiny. They feature nods to the Haunted Mansion, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Pirates of the Caribbean, and The Incredibles. Real quick, a couple of those are probably real easy to figure out. Haunted Mansion, Parlor is probably coming to this ship as well. Um, as well, why are there two Marvel things? Well, I assume, uh, again, in the kids section, there will be a Marvel area as always. And then we already know that the Worlds of Marvel dining venues will be on all three of the Wish class ships. We knew that a while ago. So a couple of those surprises, not really surprises at this point. Of course, Wednesday also marked the keel laying ceremony at the Meyerwerft shipyard in Germany. And that's why they have a coin for the keel laying that's part of the uh, tradition there. Uh, the Disney Destiny. And that's coming up a lot sooner. I mean, they said it'll be delivered in 2025. They didn't say it will sail in 2025, but they are going to, seems they're going to follow up the treasure pretty quickly. Uh, and of course, this is not even a uh, factor in the Disney Adventure, which will be sailing in Asia. Um, a lot of new ships on the horizon for Disney Cruise Line. I'm excited about this. Um, I don't know what the 101 Dalmatians or Hercules or Lion King venues are, but man, if that dinner show is Hercules, I'm going to lose it. That would be amazing. Arebus France will begin offering silhouette artwork at Disneyland Paris next week. Silhouettes are a staple of the U.S. Disney parks. They were previously offered at Disneyland Paris, but it's been years since the experience was available. Disneyland Paris Shopping shared silhouette artwork examples with the announcement on Instagram. Guests can get their silhouette cut out and framed on Main Street near the Main Street Motors Boutique in Disneyland Park. Guest silhouettes can be placed next to silhouettes of Mickey, Minnie, or Slim Beauty Castle. One frame option also has mouse ears on top. The silhouette art will be available at Disneyland Paris starting on March 29, 2024. A guest at Tokyo Disney Sea jumped into the park's Aquasphere Fountain, and footage was later uploaded to social media. A TikTok account using the name Rock Lee shared a video of the guest jumping into the Disney Sea Aquasphere Fountain area. In front, it's in the front of the park. In the video, the person who appears to be the TikTok account owner can be seen dressed as Rock Lee, an anime character from the popular Naruto franchise. He removes his jacket, then runs towards the fountain, jumping backward into the water. You can watch the video on our website. So far, there has been no word on if there are any repercussions for their actions. We would assume there were, but um, this is super uncommon in Japan. You don't see so many guest incidents, and, and especially 
uh, many for social media clout, right? We, we covered one a while ago where someone jumped over a fountain and posed with one of the tigers in the fountain at an Arabian coast. Um, and that was, there was a big social media uproar in Japan over that. I imagine there'll be an uproar over this one too, because this kind of stuff just doesn't happen there very often. Um, it happens way more in the US, in Paris, and even at the, uh, the other Asian parks, but, but less so for sure in Japan. But speaking of Japan, um, as you saw by the title of this week's video, or today's video, I should say, um, this is my last one for a little bit. I'm going to try to do some episodes of news today uh, while I'm in Japan, but um, we don't know how the internet is going to be, and I have plenty of other stuff to upload, vlogs and such. Uh, we're going to be doing on the regular um, from my journey. Lots of content on the way, if not news today. Um, or at the very least, Eric very much wants me to do like a Tokyo Minute that will have some crazy opening sequence. Um, we'll see if that happens. But nonetheless, this will be the last time I'm at the desk uh, for a little while. So I wanna, uh, I'm gonna leave you in very capable hands and good hands with Eric Morton uh, running the show for a little bit. Um, please be kind to him. I know you guys could be mean when other people, I mean, sometimes you guys are mean to me, but so you guys get especially mean when someone else sits here. Um, don't worry, we won't let Jason sit here. I'll, I'll promise you that now, because I know a lot of people voiced concerns about that. We will, uh, Jason has many other responsibilities in the company. We will leave Jason to those responsibilities for the time being. But uh, stay tuned for lots of Japan content. Uh, we're gonna be doing a series of vlogs and uh, lots of other videos uh, where we try to give you all the information you could possibly need about visiting the Tokyo Disney Resort, which I think for any Disney fan is an absolute must. Um, it's a bucket list thing that you have to do if you haven't already. So stay tuned for all of that. But for the absolute latest in all these stories and those that didn't make it into today's show, and there were a lot, it was a long show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all the Wigs members watching who make this show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow.